What's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite and as we all know at the time of making this video a lot of the leaks that Matthew Harris had spread were in fact fake news. Matthew Harris destroyed his own credibility when he had posted a Google document talking about how he fabricated information in regards to Black Ops 4 multiplayer and even Black Ops 4 zombies but at the time of making this video none of the leaks that he had spread in regards to campaign were confirmed to be fake news. Many gaming websites like Polygon, Kotaku, and even Charlie Intel themselves had stated that close sources to them had found out that a campaign was not being developed for Black Ops 4 since it was considered too outlandish and got scrapped quite a while ago. But once again, since a lot of the leaks that Matthew Harris had were in fact outdated from, I want to say, two years ago, then it could support the idea that some of the leaks in regards to no campaign in Black Ops 4 are also outdated and some of the gaming sources like Polygon and Kotaku just don't know it yet. So we just don't know what's going on with campaign at the time of making this video, but we will of course know on May the 17th when Black Ops 4 is officially revealed to the community. But as of recently, a new event was added into Black Ops 3 known as Operation Swarm featuring a Nightfall version of the fringe multiplayer map, new weapons such as the RPK LMG and the Sten SMG, we have a new limited edition camo known as the Hive, and we also got new Hive specialist cosmetic items for our characters in game and we also got the prop hunt game mode added into black ops 3 multiplayer for 10 of the multiplayer maps in game this was really surprising even though we did get operation snowblind about two months ago featuring the xpr sniper and the redwood snow multiplayer map i just didn't expect that but the biggest takeaway from my very successful live stream the other day featuring about 3,000 viewers which is huge for me thank you so much for all that support was that I do believe Black Ops 4 will feature plenty of community events such as the ones we just saw in Black Ops 3. And the reason I say this is because right before DLC 5 got revealed, when they added in Newton's cookbook into Black Ops 3 Zombies, Blundell himself had said that it's sort of acting as a live beta. So Newton's cookbook could be a feature similar to one of the core mechanics that will be introduced in Black Ops 4. So they're sort of just testing the waters, seeing how we react to certain ideas, mechanics, modes, modes, features, and such to see if they're worth putting into future Call of Duty games. Newton's Cookbook is probably one of those features that is going to make its return into Black Ops 4. Even if we don't see Gobblegums or Liquids, we'll still see a system similar to that where you can craft certain items by removing large chunks of other ones. So we'll have to wait and see. But in terms of live beta, so we didn't see many community events in Black Ops 3. We did see you know monthly updates with new weapons cosmetic items such and such but we didn't really see any specific or exclusive multiplayer maps to fit a theme of a community event world war ii has been doing it i believe iw did it a couple times but for black ops 3 to do it is incredible it's just showing us that Cherik is passionate about doing new things with black ops 4 and i think one of those things is of course creating exclusive maps different weapons camos to fit in with the theme of a new community event it could be a big community contract to unlock certain items it be just new supply drop items in general cool things like that i'm really excited for what treyarch has up their sleeve when black ops 4 of course releases but like i said thank you so much for all the support on my recent stream it was great seeing a ton of comments and supporting me as i played prop hunt which was really fun in black ops 3 i just didn't ever expect prop hunt to be a mode in bo3 i didn't think it would fit the way that it fits in with world war ii mono war for remastered and so on and that was really cool i think the nightfall fringe map was just great it fit really well in the game and i thought it played even better and smoother than the normal fringe multiplayer map i don't know why that is even though it's the same type of map but what was also cool is this little easter egg in game as you can see so nightfall fringe takes place in the past and on this poster here featured on this brick wall you can see sort of a concept of how this area is going to look in the future and as we all know that concept art is actually of the fringe the core map in black ops 3 so that's how we know that this map takes place in the past that's a really cool idea and could be teasing that black ops 4 sort of is a mix between the past and the future kind of that black ops 2 vibe where it's kind of a hybrid between the two I'm not sure if that's referring to a possible campaign theme or if it's going to be a multiplayer theme of seeing past present and future types of gameplay we just have to wait and see but 
As I was saying earlier, leaks were fabricated by Matthew Harris. He kind of destroyed his own credibility, and as many other YouTubers who are very credible, like Gaming Revolution and others, have been saying, is that look at what Kotaku, Charlie Intel, and other gaming sources have been talking about. Use those leaks as a foundation for your optimism. Think about that before you think about what Matthew Harris was talking about. Because yes, there could have been a time when David Von der Haar was like, you know what, let's change the multiplayer, let's make it like Overwatch, because he himself is probably a fan of Overwatch. So he was thinking, let's make multiplayer sort of a hero shooter. And Activision was like, fuck no, people want boots on the ground gameplay. That's why World War II went back to the past. We want gameplay similar to Black Ops 2 if you're gonna kinda go with the future a little bit. So scrap all that Overwatch bullshit. Von der Haar and his team then had to scrap whatever it is they were working on and probably went under a very stressful time, which of course, justifies people coming out and saying hey it's really tough over at Treyarch right now we're having a tough time people want to jump ship and so on but that also goes along with saying that's outdated information from probably two years ago when infinite warfare was being received poorly and activision was like you know what such hammer fuck advanced warfare 2 go back to the past with boots on the ground and then chair came at them with this overwatch bullshit and they were like what the fuck are you doing you also need to go back to the past because you are our strongest developer right now and boom that's kind of how all that happened but there were leaks about blundell wanting to jump ship that just doesn't make sense we just have to wait and see when black ops 4 gets revealed if blundell who just got promoted to co-studio head really wants to jump ship now after all the great support he's gotten over the past year and a half with black ops 3 the dlc season dlc 5 community events talking to the community doing interviews with youtubers why would he want to jump ship i do understand the stress vunderhar has expressed the stress about working under activision how there's features in your game that you didn't want but activision who is your fucking boss is telling you you need to add supply drops and that could definitely take away from your passion about making that specific game under a very specific title or company so other than that, in terms of the campaign itself, that is the only thing that all of us should be optimistic about right now. We just have to wait until the community reveal to see what exactly is going on. But I've always thought the campaign is what gives that Call of Duty its identity. Whether it's Black Ops 3, Call of Duty Ghosts, Advanced Warfare. Just imagine playing Call of Duty Ghosts multiplayer. And let's say Ghost didn't have a campaign, you'd wonder, what do Ghosts represent in this Call of Duty? You'd probably get an idea of it by playing multiplayer for a couple of hours, seeing the outfits and masks that a lot of the characters wore, and you'd see, okay, maybe the group in this game is called the Ghost, and that's why they wear this mask, that's why they use these weapons, but you'd still be a little confused. You know, I personally really enjoy the campaign because it really gives you insight on a lot of the weapons, their background, some of the settings and those backgrounds, the characters, motives, what's going on in that time period, in that specific timeline, and I just feel like it just gives the game its identity, its name, it just gives it everything. So, when I buy a Call of Duty game, you know, for the past couple of years, I've been going straight to zombies, grinding the map for a couple of hours, seeing where the community is in terms of Easter eggs and hunting. Then I'm like, okay, since at that point it's probably 3 or 4 a.m., let me just grind the entire campaign now. Let's stream the whole thing. So we beat the whole campaign. We now have insight on a lot of the core mechanics in game, how to use them and so on. Not to say that you can't learn what the weapons are and what some of the equipment does and who the characters are by just playing multiplayer, but campaign really helps out. Really prepares you for what you're going to see in multiplayer and just about everything over the course of that game's DLC season. So, I grind the whole campaign, then go on to multiplayer, then rank up, learn the new multiplayer maps, party up with friends, create some videos for my channel, and so on. That's kind of my cycle every year when a Call of Duty comes out, ever since I believe Black Ops 2 is kind of when I started that trend. So that's just me. Other people out there are saying, fuck the campaign, it's useless, nobody cares, you know, the profit Activision gets from a Call of Duty doesn't even come from a campaign, which is of course true. It comes from multiplayer and zombies, all the microtransactions featured in both those modes. I get that, I really do. But what justifies the $60 price point now? Unless they're adding so much content into multiplayer and zombies, as these leaks have been saying, that multiplayer and zombies are going to be on a different level now, there's so much more content, so many more modes, going to be a battle royale from Raven. 
it's a huge mess of shit right now, and no one's gonna understand it until Treyarch reveals his game to us in May. It just doesn't make sense. There's just so many more questions than answers after seeing these leaks, and even though most of them are fabricated, we're still looking at what, like I said, the credible gaming sources are. You know, Gaming Revolution, Charlie Intel, Kotaku. What they're saying is that, yes, the leaks about multiplayer and zombies were in fact fabricated, but there are some elements of those leaks that are still relevant towards the actual game's release. That's what we're hearing right now. But when it comes to campaign, many of these sources are coming out and saying that there isn't one. Yet, we have listings of Black Ops 4 on many websites that have descriptions stating to expect a single player campaign. So what do we believe right now? All we could believe is that there is a possibility a campaign will not be featured in Black Ops 4 when it comes out. Now, in terms of Activision Blizzard's quarterly call, it was stated that Activision has full confidence in Treyarch, which we all know they do because Black Ops 3 is easily the most, if not one of the most successful Call of Duties of all time in terms of DLC sales. Don't go along and say, Dynamite said, Black Ops 3 is better than Modern Warfare 2. I never said that, but in terms of sales, DLC, microtransactions, Black Ops 3 had it all, even if the supply drop system wasn't fair as it was within Infinite Warfare, Modern Warfare Remastered, World War 2, because I know there's easier systems in those games to unlock new weapons to come out. We all know that. But what's interesting is that in Activision's quarterly call a couple of days ago, they didn't mention the campaign at all or any type of story-driven content. They specifically had said that Treyarch was hard at work on multiplayer and zombies this year. They didn't really bring up Battle Royale too much. All they did say was that it's very successful right now. It's a trend. They didn't really look at it as a fad as I do, since I do think it's a dying fad that will probably be gone by the time September or October rolls around. But they did say that it's something that should be explored by many other IPs. And that, of course, hints a little bit that they'll probably give it a chance with Call of Duty, Destiny, some of the other titles in the near future. But, of course, there's possibility Raven is, of course, working on Battle Royale for Black Ops 4. Now, even though they didn't mention campaign or any story-driven content in their quarterly call, it doesn't mean that there isn't one. They could just be stating how multiplayer and zombies, which, of course, are the most profitable modes in a Call of Duty game, are very very bright right now and Treyarch is hard at work making sure they're polished enough for the community reveal and we also know that Black Ops 4 will be playable at this community reveal and a lot of YouTubers and developers and really cool people out there in the community are getting invites to this event so it's never really been a thing where you can play a new Call of Duty at the community reveal every year because it's kind of just you know a reveal on what's going on behind the scenes. We get a campaign trailer, maybe some small hints and teasers towards multiplayer and zombies, and that's about it. But this year, it seems to be a little different. And we don't know what that means yet, but we will in the next couple of days when Black Ops 4 is revealed to us. But let me know what you think about all this information down below in the comment section. Treyarch is, of course, very cryptic and have tweeted teasers such as this one. They're, of course, teasing the return of perks and even the pick 10 system in game. So. More people are coming out and saying this is kind of a hint that there is no campaign. They're teasing us and hinting multiplayer first, which is weird because they usually tease the campaign first with, you know, some cryptic tweets or, you know, some of those weird Twitters like the un what the fuck was he called? The unmarked man, I believe it was called back before BO3 got revealed. So they usually do things in regards to the main story of the game. And this time it seems like they're doing something different. So again, it's just a, it's a coincidence that a lot of the teasers and leaks coming out right now are in regards to multiplayer, but never say never to a campaign, because I do think that a campaign focusing on where Mason was for those 30 years in between BO1 and 2, or maybe even the true Black Ops 3, where we see events directly after BO2 and not so far in the future like BO3's weird campaign was, would be great for those of us invested into the Black Ops series. But you can also say the campaign doesn't just give black ops for its identity because zombies does as well as it has over the past couple black ops games but that's about it this is the dk dynamite stay tuned in for more live gameplays more live streams and plenty of updates in regards to black ops 4 as we get closer to the community reveal hopefully you don't get any more leaks or fabricated bullshit before trailer comes out and shows us what their new game is all about but thank you so much for watching and peace out youtube